Hi, my name's Andy, and welcome to Healthy Active. So physical activity emerged as a new area of study about 70 years ago, and has only grown into include public health intervention during the past 35 years, as our knowledge and understanding has grown. However, the ideas that underlie the field of physical activity aren't new, but are actually based on theories and teachings from the ancient past. In this video, I'm going to discuss how physical activity has been viewed throughout history and help provide a better understanding and perspective about how the recommended guidelines that we know today have come about. Whilst the study of physical activity is a new field, um, it's actually evolved from ideas dating as far back as 2500 BC, where the ancient Chinese used structured exercise to promote good health and good living. However, modern day preventative medicine and public health can be traced mainly to ancient cultures in India and subsequently Greece. In Greek mythology, Asclepius, the god of medicine, was killed by a thunderbolt from Zeus because he saved the lives of mortals and cheated Hades, god of the dead. However, Asclepius' legacy continued because his daughters inherited his powers. Panacea, goddess of healing, gave medicines to the sick, while Hygieia, goddess of health, taught people to protect their bodies by prudent living. Even today, we use the word panacea to refer to a healing agent and hygiene to refer to healthy practices. The Greek philosopher Hippocrates, otherwise known as the father of medicine, was trained in the tradition of Asclepius, and he kept records of associations between diseases and climate, living conditions and habits, such as diet and exercise. He taught that food and exercise worked hand in hand to keep a man healthy, and that exercise should be many and of all kinds. And it was here in the 4th century BC that the art of gymnastics was born. And Hippocrates was not quite the first either. The Indian physician Shushrata, 200 years earlier, recommended moderate daily exercise and that exercise be used also to treat obesity and diabetes. He even suggested back in 600 BC that exercise contributed to brain health. When he described exercise, Shajrata referred to movements associated with walking, running, jumping, swimming, diving or riding and, and participating in sports such as archery, wrestling and javelin throws. Sajrata encouraged moderate exercise for ancient Indians because he believed it improved the growth of limbs, enhanced muscle stoutness, enhanced muscle strength, endurance and muscle tautness. Moderate exercise was also encouraged because he believed it gave the desirable mental qualities of alertness, retentive memory and keen intelligence. During the Middle Ages in Europe, when the influence of Greek writings was obscured, awaiting their rediscovery in the Renaissance, the Greek medical tradition of using exercise was preserved by the Arabs and later translated from Arabic into Latin medical manuals. It was in the 14th century during the Renaissance that Italian scholars renewed their interest in classical Greek writings and recommended gymnastics as a fundamental part of education. Although the great educators of the 15th century recommended exercise as a lifelong habit, contemporary physicians unfortunately did not embrace exercise. This was changed however in 1596 by the Italian physician Hieronymus Mercuralis who urged people who led sedentary lives to exercise. His six books on the art of gymnastics laid the foundation for modern rehabilitative medicine. For the purpose of health, Mercuralis replaced passive exercises, which had been recommended by early Renaissance experts with vigorous exercise involving heavy breathing and physical effort. He considered running, jumping, climbing and wrestling healthy forms of exercise and suggested ball games to strengthen the upper body. 
It was not until the years between the US Civil War and World War I that physicians became proponents of exercise to promote good health. Their influence formed the basis of our present day acceptance of the relationship between exercise and a more rewarding and healthier life. It's important, however, to understand that until now, such teachings were, of course, based on inspiration and folk wisdom rather than the assembly of any actual evidence. The study of physical activity and its relationship to health didn't begin until the middle years of the 20th century. It all began in London in 1949 and centred around one of these. The relationship between physical activity and health was not understood scientifically until Dr Jeremy Morris, who was Professor of Public Health at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine of the University of London, began to study coronary heart disease in the late 1940s. At that time, heart attacks were rapidly increasing in frequency, and the only hunch we had was that it could be related to occupation. Morris suggested that men in physically active jobs suffered less coronary heart disease than men in sedentary jobs. Morris's study showed that highly active conductors on London's double-decker buses were at lower risk of coronary heart disease than the drivers who sat through their shifts at the steering wheel. The London bus study sparked the modern era of physical activity research. Morris later reported a similar observation that postmen delivering the mail on foot had lower rates of coronary heart disease than office workers and telephone operators. That work was shortly followed in the 1960s and 70s by the first of many studies by Dr. Ralph Paffenbarger, Professor of Medicine at Stanford University. The impact of these men's work was especially noteworthy at the time because physical activity was not yet considered to be an important influence on public health worth of study. Their work sparked interest around the world and similar observations were made with Finnish lumberjacks in 1962 and US railroad workers in 1969. Scientists for the first time wanted to look at the effect physical activity had on entire communities and a number of studies began to address the situation from a population and public health perspective. Physical activity research didn't gather full steam until landmark scientific consensus meetings in 1984 in Atlanta and 1988 in Toronto. These landmark meetings resulted in scientific consensus statements summarising the world's knowledge about exercise, fitness and health. It's fair to say that the scientific basis then grew exponentially and in 2008 the first ever federal physical activity guidelines for Americans in the US and the UK Chief Medical Officers Physical Activity Guidelines were published. In that same year the International Society for Physical Activity and Health was incorporated as a professional society for the advancement of the science and practice of physical activity and health worldwide. The society's incorporation was another sign of the maturity of the field of physical activity research. The 2008 physical activity guidelines were updated in both the US and UK in 2018 to recommend at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity per week or at least 75 minutes vigorous intensity physical activity per week to build strength on at least two days a week to improve balance two days a week and minimize sedentary time by breaking up periods of inactivity every day so there's a little insight into the history of physical activity and I hope it provides you with some perspective about today's recommended guidelines through an understanding of the past. Whilst our knowledge and understanding of physical activity is now accepted on a world stage, I can't help but think our ancient ancestors had a pretty good handle on things themselves. Like and share this video, and if you've got any questions, just ask in the comments below.